strangers. Hello, Kurt. Hello, Krista. You're not a stranger. I am not a stranger. <laughs> uh, we just want to welcome everyone to episode three of the Strange Sessions. Hope you listened to episode one and two. If not, it's okay. We'll it's forgive you. It's not like you won't know what's going on. It's not like a you know a a soap opera yep. or something. Although it can be, get pretty <laughs> yeah, it can dramatic be, it in can here. Get. <laughs> so um, what's our topic for today, Kurt? Our topic for today is reality and theories about reality. Mm. Uh, it's reality been in the news. Reality bites, man. Yeah, reality <laughs> does bite. <laughs> to quote a uh, super popular, ni- is that a 90s movie? I believe it's early 90s. Early 90s. I think no, early late 90s. late 90s. I it was when know. Winona Ryder was kind of in her prime. I think it was early 90s. Could be. Uh, listeners, like if Google anybody knows, now. let us know. Ethan Hawke. I saw it in the theater. Did you really? Yes, I did. Uh, I saw Breakfast Club in the theater. I saw Ferris Bueller's Day Off in the theater. Oh, darn. I'm old. I didn't go to a lot of movies back in the day. Yeah, you were too busy making out and whatnot in no, the theater. I was a I was a prude when I was a teenager. Aww. But that's enough about that. That's for another episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a Friday Night's with Jeff and Joe topic. <laughs> That'll be the one where we're drinking, talking about it. <laughs> yeah. So reality and what did you say? Just theories about oh, reality, theories different about theories reality. about reality. So this is all your realm, huh. pun intended. Oh, and I was going to tell you, uh, there was just a thing in the news that they're saying a 13-year-old boy in Ireland, I believe, died. And several websites were blaming it on the blue whale really? suicide thing. But... The more you look into it, it sounds like he was participating in that choking game. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, where yeah. you pass out or whatever. Mm-hmm. So a lot of that's getting spread around saying, oh, it was the blue whale stuff where oh, it really wasn't. Okay. But there's still tons of warnings out there about it. And supposedly... Yeah, I haven't seen it in the news at all lately. So did you read that online? Or yeah. Did... Okay. I read that online. Interesting. Yeah, I'm hoping to f- get some kind of update on that. I mean. It's just right now it's still warnings about it going on. Yeah. And I feel like they're just having a really hard time um, verifying anything or, you know. Yeah, you know, they are because there's just not enough sources mm-hmm. to verify anything. So we're keeping an eye on that, and that's that. All right. So how, how do you want to tackle this? I don't know. Insane it's, uh, topic. You know. <laughs> it's pretty deep. If listeners are out there, have a shot. Have a, I'm having a beer right now, <laughs> as a matter of fact. Have a beer. <laughs> Smoke them if you got them because it's kind of a deep topic. Got your, get your boots on. We're so going to get deep. It's about reality mm-hmm. and the theories that are going around right now. There's a very popular theory that reality is a computer simulation. Yes, I don't like this one. It freaks I me out. I do. I mean, so I like, like the Matrix. It's yes, basically the Matrix. Yeah. That's going to be the last one we talk about because that's kind of a big one right okay. now, and that's the one that I'm the most interested in. Yeah. But I've wanted to do this topic since we've started the podcast because I'm just fascinated by this. Okay. Well, good. So when you look at reality, it's hard to even pin down exactly what reality is. Mm-hmm. You know, because a lot of it is perception. Totally. You know, like Chris, Krista and I have listened to the episode uh, Blurry Photos. Hilarious episode. Another of podcast. Blurry Photos, yes. You know, tackles this kind of stuff. And they had an episode about reality. You know what I found interesting about that is how they talked about colors and how we That's all That's what I was just going to bring up is about how dogs can't see certain colors. Mm-hmm. So, Well, my husband's colorblind. Oh, I didn't know that. So when my husband Jim will walk into a room and he'll say, oh, does this brown shirt look okay? And I'll say... Babe, that's a purple shirt. <laughs> Just it, let him go right out there. It. That's like an interesting example of how you know his brown is a totally different color than my brown. Yeah, which makes you is reality different to each person, right? Or animal, or whatever is experiencing it, or yeah. is it an overall picture? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's hard to. It's really hard to come up with a definition for it. Um, the dictionary. I, pro- de- I was gonna say. I think there probably yeah, dictionary is a definition. definition says reality is the world or the state of things as they actually exist, as opposed to an idealistic or notional idea of them, hmm. which kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. But it's just it's also very vague. It's very vague. <laughs> it's open to interpretation, which I guess is the whole idea of what reality is. Yeah, I mean, it's basically everything. Hmm. Everything that's not fiction or imagined is basically reality. And, you know, the most popular theory of reality, and if you went with Occam's Razor, which says that the most obvious one is the answer, is Mm -hmm. that reality is just real. It's just... It is what it is. It's everything around us 
It's what we're experiencing. It's all that stuff. That is called physical realism. Mm -hmm. And that's a theory, but it's a boring one. I like it the best, though, because it freaks me out the least. I don't, because I think a lot of some of the other ones, I think, are fascinating because they can explain away things like the Mandela effect. Sure, yeah. Or ghosts and all that stuff. I think some some of the other theories about reality... Like I don't answer want them all to that explain stuff. ghosts away, though. I want ghosts to be a mystery. proof of life after death. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want ghosts to be. I don't even know if I think ghosts are a proof of life after death. I think it's a piece of the puzzle, at least. It is a piece of the puzzle. I'm not and sure I think that's proof, part of the reason why I don't want reality to just be this humdrum mm-hmm. going on around us is because that's boring and I want something exciting. Okay. So that's the first one. Reality is real. Physical realism. Wah, wah. Boring. Lame. <laughs> reality bites. <laughs> you know, and going along with that, there's one called presentism, okay. which says that the only real thing is this moment right now. Yep. And that moment is gone after you heard me say it because it was just that one moment. Hmm. Everything else either exists as a memory or as a thought about the future. Well, that's interesting, you know, for like, I think Buddhism and religions like that where it's really yeah. about mindfulness and yeah. living in the moment. And I think and that I think that the way society is, I think we're getting more and more away from that. Oh, absolutely. And anxious well, it about seems the future. Like there's, there is a shift towards that. But technology is making it so hard to be mindful and in the moment because everybody's on their phone all the time and you see people out to dinner and five out of six people are staring at their phones instead of talking I'm to each other. I'm one of those people. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> I admit it. That's funny. But I mean, I think I totally agree with that one. This, this moment that we are in right now is the only real thing because everything else is a memory or a worry or an idea about the future. Nothing else exists. <sighs> yeah, it's kind of mind boggling to think about, but it's also very true. I get it. It's yeah, true. It is very true. Like that sentence you just said a second ago, it's gone. It's gone. It happened. Yeah. It's not what's yep. happening right now. I, I feel like as a society, we're getting more anxious worrying about the future or nostalgic for we the live past, in and scary I scary times. We do live in very scary times, and I think we are getting away from that mindfulness of of the moment of the now, and I think mm-hmm. we're getting away from that. But I I I really get the presentism thing. Mm-hmm. I understand that. And on the opposite side of that, uh, Jamie, the one that did our intro music. music for us, sent me an article. It is something called eternalism, which says there is no such thing as time. That everything that's happened or is going to happen is all right there at once Hmm. it's just the way we experience it i can't wrap my head around that quite yet. i can't either that one kind (laughs) of that one kind of boggles my mind uh one of the articles i read said it compared it to taking a novel or a book of my life tearing all the pages out throwing them around the room every page will be a self-contained you know moment it'll be Mm -hmm. a self-contained thing And it's just a matter of how you put them in order and perceive them. They're all there. It's just how you perceive them. I get that. It still doesn't help sort out the whole there's no time thing. No. Because we grow older. That one is like kind of dense and hard to get into it. You know, basically one of the articles said, according to that, Lady Gaga and the dinosaurs all exist. Everything right now totally exists. It's just how we perceive but we're all perceiving it the same then. Supposedly. Yeah. Because yeah, there's a, not someone out there who's perceiving the dinosaurs right now. No. And if they are, no, they but might it, have but something going on there. Yeah. <laughs> so hmm. that one is a little hard to wrap your mind around. Yeah. I don't like that one. No. I, 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 Thanks, Jamie. But I wah, like the presentism. Wah. Yeah. That makes sense to me. Yeah. Okay. I, that, one, that one's my favorite so far because that one is really kind of obvious that Mm -hmm. nothing exists but this moment and the moment is gone everything else is a memory and then there is the old favorite solipsism which says nothing exists but me the old favorite the old favorite i've never heard of this solipsism (laughs) says nothing exists but me because i'm aware i'm thinking i'm aware of my own mind and that because of that i am the only thing that exists i am creating you Hmm. from my mind i don't know that you exist because i'm not inside your head you could be me making you up. Mm. 
That's an old, old philosophy. Well, that's c- creepy. I don't like that one either. <laughs> <laughs> that implies that we're all just sort of crazy then. <laughs> no, it just means that I'm making you out to be crazy because you're all you're all projections of my mind and I'm imagining you. And you're interacting with yourself. Yes. Okay. You know, and that goes along with the uh, the old thought experiment called brain in a jar that says how do we know that we aren't just brains in a jar somewhere and scientists are making us right that's true you know there's the no mind way is to an know amazing that. thing look at our dreams yes that that's that was one of the things that came up time after time in these articles is that when you're having a dream it seems so real to oh, you oh absolutely and then you wake up and you realize it's not real it's in how do you just know that this there. isn't yeah. the same thing that we aren't experiencing the same thing right now could be it very well could be. That's a, that, yeah, that's, that's a, that kind of ties into the whole Matrix thing, too. Yeah, we're going to get to that because that's okay. that's kind of the big theory du jour right now. Yeah, okay. And I, I'm the piece de resistance. foreshadowing I like the, the Matrix. The simulation. Is it because uh, you want to be Neo? No. <laughs> <laughs> the first movie was okay. I liked the first movie, but then What this, was her name? Uh, Trinity. Trinity. Yeah. It was okay, but it was, and that was one frustrating so thing with looking ago. up stuff about this online is that every Everything single that, article yeah. had to mention References the Matrix. The Matrix. Yeah. Right. It does help put a frame of reference, though, around the idea. It does, but it, it's not a new idea. I mean, that's this has been right. the idea that this is a projection or something like that has been around forever. It's really? just, yeah, it's just that it's... I'd be interesting to know when, when that actually did originate, like who came I, up with that I believe. Idea kind of Plato even oh, maybe really? went into that a little bit not okay. with big, you know, being a computer simulation but he went into that yeah. it was like a a moving play or something like that okay and then there's you know the next one is one that we could probably do a whole episode about because it's really well known and it's really cool is the multiverse theory mm, mm-hmm. that the reality that we are in right now is one of infinite infinite parallel universes mm-hmm and along with that, there's one called fictional realism, which basically says when we imagine something, we put it into reality in a parallel universe. Ooh. Yeah. Like, you know, I That's can imagine. That's an interesting idea. Yeah, I can imagine. We're a, wrecking havoc all over some other, yeah. <laughs> some I can, other universe right yeah, now. Yeah. That's, like, you know, I can imagine Olivia Wilde coming in here right now, Ooh. throwing me down on the table and kissing me. And, <laughs> and I'll slowly back out of the room. <laughs> and that didn't happen in this reality, but it happened in one of the parallel universes. Nice. And parallel universe theory is actually really interesting, but that's a really dense. Yeah. That could be a whole episode in itself. Parallel I mean, I, universe, I, Kurt is having some fun. Yeah. Well, there, and that's it. I know that we've talked a, about there's this. There's a universe where you and I are married. There's sure. a universe where you and I are assassins trying to kill each other. Yeah. Or we don't know each other. Or at we all, don't maybe. know each other. Um, but that's the theory about ghosts that sometimes these universes bleed into each other. Yes. Yeah, and that's also deja vu. People think deja mm. vu is when the you in a lot of nearby parallel universes are doing the same thing that all of you are like, whoa. I think the Mandela effect could come into play there. It very easily could. <clears throat> Interesting. It very easily could. It's, it really is infinite possibilities. Yeah. I mean, there's been a lot of research, you know, quantum physics, a lot of stuff like that, looking into String the possibility theory, of, yeah. of parallel universes. And I like that one. But at the same time, I don't know if I like that one. It's hard to wrap your head around when it's you think about it, that there's around. infinite numbers of me out there doing infinitely, slightly different things, you know? You and know, it, you know, uh, you know, I'm a big believer in the Mandela effect. I think yeah. there's something going on. And I do think that parallel universes could explain. Yeah, that. because I, you know, read a lot of people theorizing that re earth or reality or whatever you want to call it has a fail safe system where if something Cataclysmic, cataclysmic happens, happens yeah. we immediately shift. Or traumatic, yeah. really. Like we, 9-11. Yep. It's a good we example. We immediately shift to another. You just take a step to the left. Yep, take a step to the left. You're on a slightly different route. And it's generally the same, but there might be something a little different there. And mm-hmm. we people think that that's what's going on with uh, the Mandela effect. Hmm. It's just a theory. Don't know if it's true or not. So I like the idea of that, though. I do, too. And that we get to, because the, the weird thing about the parallel universe that is that this me isn't perceiving what those me's are doing, you no, know? No, So if this me in this universe dies, I don't get to just shift over to the next universe and keep going. No. Whereas in the Mandela effect, though, kind of does. 
It does. In that theory, you you have shifted over to a different dimension or universe or whatever, and your consciousness came with you. Yeah. Here, your consciousness leaves. When but for some reason, happened. it seems like some people remember the stuff and some people don't. Mm-hmm. So there's like a weird mixture of people that you know remember this this way and people remember it this way. What's interesting about that too is that the same person will remember some Mandela effect things, but the other one, they're like, what are you talking about? It's yep. always been this way. Yeah, that's and like me with the New Zealand thing where yeah. all of a sudden one day... I'm horrible at geography, though, so I couldn't have told you where New Zealand was 20 years yeah, ago. I, if, it w- <laughs> if it wouldn't have been a country that I was constantly <laughs> looking at... Yeah, with your friend. I would, yeah, I would have been the same way. Because mm-hmm. I suck at geography. Have we talked about the Mandela effect? That's no. got to be a whole episode, then. That will be a whole... Okay. That's going to have to be a whole episode we, we on here. We shouldn't go too far into that, because no. people are probably like, what are you talking about? But another <laughs> neat thing about parallel universe theory is... Uh, I don't remember if it was a Blurry Photos that talked about it or somebody else that talked about it, but they said if it can be an infinite number of possibilities. Yeah. That technically there is a universe where... My life is exactly the same, but it's 10 years in the past. <gasps> yes, that so was it's basically photos. Yeah, so it's basically yeah. time travel, but you're not traveling through time. You're traveling to a parallel universe where it is 10 years in the past. So they said you could go mess yeah, with you your could grandparents? Kill, you could kill, yeah, you could kill your grandparents yeah. in the past. You could kill your dad, sleep with your and mom. It would not have any effect. Ooh. Would, <laughs> no. That's another episode, and it would not have. <laughs> that's, that's the late night. That is the late night episode. <laughs> that's the paranormal flavor. Would you rather episode? <laughs> um, you, yeah. And then you don't have to deal with the consequences back in this. Yeah, universe. there's no uh, cause and effect with that stuff. So that was. How do you travel to the other universes? I don't know. That's the question. I don't know, and I can't wrap my mind around there being an infinite number of universes. Do we need a black hole or a wormhole for that? Something something like that. <laughs> You got one of those? <laughs> no. Let's come on, Hadron Collider people over at. Get working uh, on that. Get yeah, working on those black holes. Make this happen. <laughs> um, it also, it kind of could lend itself to the whole idea of reincarnation. Yeah. That when you your consciousness leaves here, it moves to another universe. You're just not aware of the past one that you were in. Yeah. There's a. I don't remember if I talked about it on here or on Paranormal Palaver, but people say that. When you are born, everybody lives a long life. It's just mm-hmm. not necessarily in this reality. Yeah. You know, it's a parallel universe. You didn't die. You, you know, had a long life. So it could tie in with all that kind of stuff. You know, it's funny. I don't really buy into reincarnation in the like sort of religious or spiritual sense. But when you talk about it in the context of parallel universe, for whatever reason, my brain's more like, yeah, I can buy that. Yeah. It's definitely interesting. Hmm. I used to love that one, but I don't know. I don't know why I soured on the parallel universe thing. Hmm. You guys don't get along anymore? No. That's unfortunate. No. You had a falling out with parallel I had a falling out with the parallel Kurtz. <laughs> um, <laughs> I need to go killing them one by one like that Jet Li movie. <laughs> we we should probably also mention we keep talking about Paranormal Palaver. Um, so the strange the strange sessions is an old school media production, and so is Paranormal Palaver. Friday nights with Jeff and Joe that I mentioned. So we have a website if you guys want to go check that out. We've got a couple other um, podcasts under development right now, but I just thought I'd mention that because we keep referencing these other yeah, podcasts. It is a sister podcast. Yeah, other podcast. We call Paranormal Palaver the flagship. Ooh, and flagship. so we're like a sister podcast. Um, Friday Nights with Jeff and Joe is the brother podcast. So nice. We'll have some cousins, maybe some aunts and uncles worked <laughs> in there. Redheaded stepchildren. <laughs> One eyed redheaded stepchildren. <laughs> so yeah, that's Parallel Universe. Okay. And I like that one. I, I do and I don't. I feel I, like I, it explains a lot, like you said. It does. Maybe like the Matrix would too. It does, but, but I kind of think the simulation idea explains more okay uh and the one other one that i'm going to mention but i'm not going to talk about right now because this is actually going to come into play when we talk about the simulation one is called phenomenalism okay so remember that we're going to discuss that it just sounds good it does sound good sounds phenomenal um so now in the uh theory du jour seems to be that reality is a computer simulation Mm -hmm. or a hologram some kind of a simulation. Hologram. Yeah, that was one of the other ones is that it's, an, it's a hologram. Okay, I don't get it. I don't get it either, but okay. I think that was what people were saying before computers, you know, before video games. Okay, like a hologram, I'm picturing Princess Leia. Yeah. Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope. It's another way of saying that what we see around us isn't reality. That, okay, that, it's I mean, just it's like not a, real, it's a projection. It's 
it's um virtual reality. It's basically an old school way of saying that we live in a computer simulation. Okay. And the funny thing about this was that a couple weeks ago that I love Doctor Who. The Doctor mm-hmm. Who episode was about people finding out that they were actually in a computer simulation, not real. Were they pissed? They were Okay, I spoilers if you didn't pissed. if spoilers if you didn't get to that episode yet, but they found out that it was an alien society that was wanting to take over Earth that was running computer simulations to see where our weaknesses and stuff Ooh. were. So the people that found out they were in a simulation were killing themselves in order not to give any information, you know, like mass suicides, not yeah. to give any information to them. Okay. I don't... That's, that's not a theory. Complex. That's not a theory that we're... <laughs> that's more <laughs> complex than I was expecting it to that's be. That's the one I believe. That is a theory I believe. <laughs> it's aliens. It's definitely <laughs> aliens. <laughs> we need that, ancient aliens. We need that ancient alien <laughs> yeah, guy. With the crazy hair. With the crazy hair. <laughs> 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 I want to be an ancient alien theorist because that yeah. would be a cool job. Wild hair. You know, that's like a quantum physics theorist because that's all... Yeah. Theory. You know, mm-hmm. I want a job where I could be like, eh, that's maybe. It yeah. could be. Could be aliens. I'll look into that. <laughs> Where's my check? Where's my yeah six figure check? <laughs> so I want to be an ancient alien theorist. That's what I want to be when I grow up. I'll buy you a t-shirt. <laughs> it's close enough. So a business yeah, business card. Just make a business card, and you can call yourself anything. I don't think I'll get paid though doing it. <laughs> but the computer simulation theory actually got popular in the very recent past because Elon Musk is the CEO of SpaceX, which is the company that is trying to take people to Mars. Yeah. And he's also the CEO of the Tesla Mm -hmm. that are doing the car stuff, right? Yep. It's a car. Yeah, the electric cars. And he was on a panel where he said he believes that we are in a simulated reality. Really? His exact quote. Like he really believes this. Yeah, he does. Okay. He said His quote was, if you assume any rate of improvement at all, video games will become indistinguish- indistinguishable from reality. That's easy for me to say. <laughs> <laughs> Even if that rate of advancement drops by a thousand from what it is right now, then you can say, okay, imagine 10,000 years in the future, which is basically nothing on the evolutionary scale. Mm-hmm. It said, given that we are on a trajectory to have games that are indistinguishable from reality, <laughs> I can't say that indistinguishable. word. Indistinguishable? Yes. <laughs> That's cute. That those games could be played on any set-top box or PC or whatever, and there would probably be billions of such computers, and it would seem to follow that the odds that we are in a actual reality is one in billions. Hmm. So he's kind of using video games as proof. He is. That. He said he has said that. Forty years ago, we had Pong just came out. Yeah. You know the video game Pong with the two lines two paddle, and the dot. Yeah, paddles. Quote yeah, unquote, the two paddles. Pa- the two paddles and the dot. <laughs> and in forty Some years high now, tech stuff. <laughs> yeah, very high tech. I remember playing that and being like, "This is so cool." <laughs> right. Yeah. Atari. We were all there. Yeah. And he says that that was just forty years ago, and today we have. You can put uh, goggles on. Yeah, now you can and have virtual reality. You can have world. photorealistic games. You mm-hmm. have all of this stuff. So. You know, if you look at 10,000 years in the future, what are things going to be? Mm-hmm. So he says he believes that there is a one in a billion chance that we are not in a computer simulated reality. That's shocking to me, actually. It is. When I first heard it, I was like, yeah, that is weird. But the one more I billion? more I read about it and stuff, the more it kind of makes sense. And also, you need to oh, convince I me, can't Kurt. think of this guy's name. He's like the big scientist guy now, Neil... Tyson Degrassi. Neil Degrassi Tyson. Oh, I was said <laughs> said that he feels there is a fifty fifty chance that we are living in a simulation. Really? Yes. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, you know this is something that has been talked about in the past, here and there, but it really became a thing in two thousand three. There was a British philosopher named Nicholas Bostrom that wrote a paper about the simulated universe hypothesis. And in his paper, he said his hypothesis is that one of these three things must be true. Number one says all civilizations become extinct before becoming technologically mature. Number two says all technologically mature civilizations lose interest in creating simulations. Number three says humanity is literally living inside a computer simulation. And this is what kind of got the ball rolling with this whole thing where he is saying any 
it could be human, it could be alien, any society, if they don't become extinct, Mm -hmm. they're going to mature to the point where they are able to create a simulated life like simulations like we do with the sims computer game so the question is who's doing this then if we're in a simulation we don't know we don't know that's why we don't know it could be aliens wanting to see i know joe's answer what's his answer illuminati, the illuminati. The illuminati. <laughs> exactly no it could be it could be us in the future. It could be humans in the future. It could be aliens wanting to study us. And, okay. So if num- it's us in the future, what's what would be the reason for that? To have a record of our history. To but study. But we already have that. Yeah, we do. But it could be. Of a course, lot of these things said history it could be, books are skewed. You yeah, know. Yeah. To the viewpoint of whoever. It could wrote be like it. us playing The Sims, where we create this. Let's put Krista's hair up today. Yeah, that's that's what it's saying. It said. Can they make me lose like 50 pounds? That'd be great. <laughs> they could make me rich. <laughs> but no, it's it said basically that we are living in this. So there's no such thing as free will then? There is. We're just inside this computer okay. simulation, but we do have free will. Okay. We're not being controlled. We are just inside the simulation. Our perception is just being controlled. Yes. But we are more or less part of the simulation, but we have free will and thought. That and we were programmed with artificial intelligence. Oh, so we're sort of just a consciousness. We don't have a physical body. It's our no, brains it, that are simulating yes, the f- yes. like this pen I'm holding and I can feel in my hand yes. is really just happening in my brain. Yes. Uh, another way it's that kind he- of like how when you put hot water, you know, you have something yeah. to put cold water, you know, yes. those weird sensory tests that can really mess up you you plug your nose and bite an onion and it tastes like an apple. It, it's all yeah, about perception. It is all about perception. And everything has been programmed in here. Like, it's basically the Sims. They're, we're basically free will Sims well, that are just put in a spot. That was what Nicholas Bostrom, okay. his hypothesis post, you know, when he, when he brought this up, that was his thing. Another way he stated it was... That was in 2003. Yes. Another okay. way he stated it, which might be easier, is he said... If there were a substantial chance that our civilization will ever get to the post-human stage and run ancestor simulations, then how come you and I are not living in such a simulation? If we get to a point in the future, and we should with the way that computer technology, all this stuff is going, there should be a point in the far future where we're able to run a simulation of humanity. Hmm. You know, whether or it's to study it, whether it's to record you know, how we were or whether it's to record things that could have happened differently. Hmm. Or we just want to re-experience things. Yeah. I, I mean, a lot of these articles said if you were a person in the future, wouldn't you kind of do that? But it also hinges on whether or not that society would want to do that. Yeah, I feel like why would you want to do that, though? Then you're just living in the past, basically. No, you're just running these simulations and observing them. You're not really living in the past. You're, you're not the one them. in the simulation. You're you're outside the simulation, and we are the ones in the simulation that they're watching or monitoring. Yeah, I don't know. I, I can't think of what the purpose would be of that. Uh, what's, what's the purpose? And, you know, we run simulations on diseases, how diseases spread. Mm-hmm. This is basically them running a simulation on how humanity. Yeah works it's basically what we do but on a grander scale i suppose yeah i can i can get my mind around this i can too i mean i can because when you talk about things like virtual reality well that clearly is a thing that exists and imagine ten thousand years from now what we are going to be capable of doing we are going to be capable of running a simulation where you put these people in there and let them go and Mm -hmm. see where things go Mm mm-hmm that were basically that big experiment. Yeah. I also kind of had this belief that, you know, we as a society may come to a screeching halt and get thrown back into like, you know, yeah, not medieval times, but you know, we're not going to maybe even have technology anymore. I've just read a lot about like, and North Korea has actually claimed that they have the capabilities of doing an EMP electromagnetic pulse that would take out like our electrical grid. That would I that would that. shut us down pretty quick, and we'd that. be back to like bartering, and you know there'd be if you have a new car, you wouldn't be able to drive anywhere because no, it runs on gas. a computer. Yeah, 
So I don't know. I guess I could see us getting to that point in 10,000 years, but only if we don't just destroy, you know, ourselves and technology beforehand. What I think messes people up with this is that they assume it would be fake. I mean, it's not. If we're a computer simulation, this table is real to me. Everything is real to me. But it's not real. But it's not real. <laughs> it's a computer simulation. It's like a dream. In. It's like a really Basically. vivid dream. Basically, we're the Sims with free wills. Huh. You know, like uh, some of the articles mentioned Mario. It said, you know, the programmers program him to only jump so high. We're programmed to only do certain things. Right, we can't fly. And where this gets really weird is <laughs> oh, weirder now we're than getting it is. Weird? I okay. can, I mean, I don't think it's that weird. I think that at some point in the far future, we are going to be capable of running computer simulations. And then how do we know that right now we are not one of those computer simulations? We don't, I guess. We don't. That's the terrifying part. I don't think so. It's what terrifying. are the arguments to say that that's not true? Like, have we have you read into that at all? Like, what are people what do people use as proof? Um, I don't really not see real. a lot of that. <laughs> Just common sense. <laughs> people saying that's dumb. So yeah, and a lot of people make the comparisons to not so much the newer TVs, but like the old school TVs where you would be watching the TV. Mm -hmm. And you get closer to the TV and realize that what you are seeing as people pixels. are pixels. Yeah. And they're saying basically that's what atoms are. Atoms are what make us up. Mm -hmm. And atoms are a lot of empty space. Mm -hmm. So they're saying basically it's kind of the same thing. I, okay. I got, you know, I like get where uh, Blurry Photo said, you could put a really good TV mm -hmm. in a window, window yeah. and not know that that's not reality. Right. So basically atoms, molecules, all that stuff are the pixels that create this. I don't like it, though. <laughs> I, I like the idea that if I go outside and I feel the breeze in my face, it's actual wind. It is. I'm smelling it's just, actual It's just flowers. computer simulated wind. That's not real, then. It's real to us. Yeah. Because we are in this. I guess. I don't. I feel like I you can give yourself like, a mental health issue <laughs> thinking yeah, about you, this you can, too much. And, and that's what I was going to get to <laughs> is that this is the part that kind of is like, wow is that we are a computer simulation that we will get advanced to the point one day where we will be able to create a simulation. Mm -hmm. Basically, that means that there's an infinite number of simulations, simulations, which is basically the same as parallel universe theory. Yeah. And, you know, the simulation we create are one day going to get advanced enough to create a simulation of their own. Mm -hmm. So it's just a constant chain of computer simulations. That was Elon Musk. That was what he was getting at with this whole thing. And what was interesting is that uh, there's a scientific theory called quantum chromodynamics. Okay. Which sounds like a company. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like a good word to play in Scrabble, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, that basically they it? say if we're a simulation, mm -hmm. there has to be a grid work. Mm -hmm. that we are being simulated onto. Okay. And they are looking at the tiniest, you know, when you get down to protons, electrons, neutrons, they are looking at that to find a framework that mm -hmm. this could be projected on. And recently they found something that is called, and I'm going to massacre this, the Griezen zadoprin kuzman limit well, or sure. GSK limit. <laughs> yeah. That they believe is kind of a framework that everything could possibly be run on. Okay. But that's at the very, very... And what is it? It's a limit. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, started, <Okay. laughs> I started reading it, and I'm like, what? <laughs> huh? So, yeah, it was, about, it was about microwave signals and okay. how when they're dispersed, they would go in certain ways that, that followed like a grid work pattern. Well, you know what was interesting about blurry photos? This just reminded me of that. Is it really does come down to perception and think about all the things that we can't see, like radio waves, yeah, like microwaves, yep. like all the colors of the spectrum, like all the you know. There's so much going on around us right now that we don't even see. Yeah, imagine the things that aren't man-made, or that maybe this framework is around us and we just can't see it. Yeah, no, I totally, I totally agree with that. Hmm. I, d I don't know what I think of this. I like this theory. I think it explains a lot. I think it explains, and this came up in several of the articles I read, how 
I, there's a name for it, how we are just in this, just placed in this certain way that nothing destroys us. You know, it would take an asteroid, uh, a relatively small asteroid hitting the Earth to kick up dust that would blot out the sun for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. That all this stuff that should, could wipe us out doesn't. Hmm. And they're saying, as a species, as a species, as a, yeah, yeah, that something like put us here, like to study us. Well, and you know, we're doing a pretty good job of destroying ourselves and we each are. other. I mean, people we are, are and that, that was another record numbers. There are people that are really into this simulated universe theory that feel that the society that created us is gone, that something happened. Oh. And, and now we're are, just left to our own and devices. And we're left to ourselves. And that's, that's great. That's why they believe that's <laughs> this is why. where ISIS came from. <laughs> pretty much. They believe that. I mean, basically, we're like an ant farm that a kid yeah. left to, to die. That that's why there's a, more of the things are happening, like the Mandela effect, that we're mm. kind of slowly deteriorating. They're glitches, yeah. kind of. Okay. And then another thing happened. I couldn't find a date. I, there's a date, but I didn't write it down, and I'm not sure when it was, but it was a couple years ago. There is a theoretical physicist named James Gates who was looking at the mathematical equations of something called supersymmetry. Is he related to Josh? I don't think so. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> but he was looking at the something called supersymmetry. It's a quantum physics thing. Okay. He was looking at the mathematical equations of it when he discovered computer code buried in the equation. What? Yeah. It's okay. a computer it's a computer code called block linear self dual error correcting code and it's used in browser software. Okay. He said it it's it wasn't just a random set of ones and zeros. He said it was this computer code. Mm -hmm. He said the odds of that are almost impossible. And basically what the code does is it monitors information sent and measures it against what's already known and self-corrects if it has to to accurately transmit and receive correct information. So where did he find that? It was buried in the mathematical equations of supersymmetry where he was looking at like quarks and protons and neutrons and all that stuff and he found this code in there. Okay. And That's people, crazy. Yeah, that is very crazy. <laughs> and now so have other people verified this i believe so okay. i mean it's kind of a big thing mm -hmm. and now it's gonna this is where it gets even crazier oh, we're gonna uh, get crazy we're gonna now? get crazier i don't know if you're gonna like this i'm gonna put my seatbelt on put your seatbelt on put your waiters on because okay. it's gonna get deep <laughs> a seatbelt and waiters <laughs> it's gonna okay get deep. uh people think that in order to do this it would take unbelievable computing power but mm -hmm. People that are really into this stuff believe there are two potential shortcuts. One of them is one I've mentioned, a theory. It's actually a theory of reality that I me mentioned before called phenomenalism. Okay. What phenomenalism says is that when you stop viewing or interacting with an object, it disappears until you look at it or interact with it again. Mm -hmm. Like the closet behind you that has our snacks in it. Right. We're not in there right now, so it's not there just the door it's like a computer program filling it in once we open the door and look it'll fill it in like a video game like a video game like it has to okay and that's actually a, a belief about reality that some people believe that it's the whole if a tree falls in a forest nobody's there nobody's to, there it doesn't well, there is no tree noise. or forest no. <laughs> because we're not in it that unless we are specifically looking at something or interacting with it it doesn't exist so how what about here like you he i can hear traffic going by outside you're just hearing the sound you're not the traffic isn't there but you're probably you're hearing the sound of it because it should be there because it should be there okay so they're saving on the computer processing stuff by that that's one of the shortcuts that some people believe in is called phenomenalism. That unless you're looking at it or doing something with it, it's not there. So how do things then happen when you're not there? Things progress when you're not there to see it progress. It doesn't. It progresses in the computer code. It's not. Okay. It's not really there hmm. that we can see it. Don't like that one either. Go and on. And the second one gets even <laughs> crazier. Oh, okay. The second one people believe in is called NPC theory. And what NPC, NPC? Okay. non-player character. That comes from games like Final Fantasy, like video games, where Grand Theft Auto, mm -hmm. where, <coughs> you know, you go to a town, mm -hmm. and there's a couple characters you have to interact with, or you can buy stuff from, but there's a lot of people that are just walking around doing absolutely nothing. 
And the people that believe the NPC theory says that a lot of people that we see on a day walking down the street are just there to fill, are just there to fill in space, are not actual hmm. thinking. Could walk up to them and talk to any of them, though. You could. They're just not actual self-free will hmm. people. And okay. some of, some people believe that there's a lot of people like that in the world, that there's only They're just a percentage simulated. of people that, that are, are real. actually thinking free will do they know that they're not real no Hmm. no to them they're real but they're basically just space fillers Hmm. to save on that's what other people believe with the saving on the computer processing power when you think about that though we've got like nano computers nanotechnology and look at what a smartphone can do that's a tiny little computer in there and our smartphones can do (coughs) some crazy stuff i don't know if if we need a shortcut for the computer power. Right. You know, but people say these as the phenomenalism thing, I think is kind of cool. I can kind of understand that if it is a reality, if it is a computer projection Mm -hmm. or a simulation, not everything is no, but it just seems Hmm. like more trouble than it's worth. I guess. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of work for it is. Yeah. I don't know. That's tough. The best way you can wrap your head around it is a video game. Yeah. So like Skyrim. Yeah. Every character, every person walking around that, you know, world, you can actually walk up and talk. They only have a limited number of things that's, that they that's, can yeah. say, though. Yeah. That's what they're saying, that the, the NPC people in the world are. You can go are. in any house. You can go, you yep. know, but. That they're basically space well, it's fillers funny with. Because if there's like a some kind of a delay in the game, you can actually see the room populate yeah. As you walk in, you're like, oh, there must be my my Wi-Fi is bad or yeah. something. Yeah. Huh. So there doesn't that exist until you get in there. That these people are real in it. That they're more or less artificial intelligence. That they're not real like you and I are real. Hmm. Or at least I'm real. I'm not sure about you. <laughs> hmm. So yeah, that's. I'm real weirded out right now. That's, <laughs> oh, interesting. That's it. I like the parallel universe explanation the best because to me it's the most um, plausible. I kind of like the computer one. I kind of like the simulated universe hypothesis. Hmm. I I I think that's possible. I think that in the far future we're advanced enough to be able to run a simulation, and we're that simulation simulation. of that future civilization. Yes. Hmm. And that someday we'll advance to the point where we'll start up. But, you know, that with the people that think that whoever or whatever created this is gone is now. gone and that we're, you know, slowly falling apart. Uh, there's a, there's crazy stuff that some of these people believe when I, you know, read online. One of them I didn't know that you and I've talked about in the past or just recently is that a lot of people – believe that something happened in the mid 90s or early 2000s where reality changed Hmm. they don't know what it is uh you i brought this up with you where i was talking with somebody that there's a lot of people that are convinced that sunlight is different now than it was when they were kids and Mm -hmm. it was orange it was more orange and now it's just like a a harsh white light i'm looking outside it's a sunny day (laughs) and and these people (laughs) think that so it would have had, like, if I had orange sunglasses on, that's more what it would... No, it was been. just a different kind of light. That's what these people believe. Hmm. I'm not saying I do. I can't buy into that at all. But they're saying that they think that... I think you just perceive things so differently when you're oh, a kid. I totally agree. With, with such with, nostalgia. Yes. yes. And but they think that something happened... It's, they usually say 98, sometime in the 90s, hmm. where something changed. And, you know, some of them think that that's when we became hmm. a simulation. Was it grunge music? Did grunge music do it? I don't know, but flannel, flannel shirts were awesome. <laughs> it's had an impact it, on you. Clearly. It had. I love flannel shirts. <laughs> oh boy, that's kind of like the idea that um, I remember my the house I grew up in seeming huge when I was a kid. You know that that yeah. uh, you yes. have a memory of yes. a place seeming so huge, and then you, as an adult, you go back. I mean, not like. I mean, I've been to my house, obviously, throughout the years. But I remember places like that. And you go back and you're like, I remember this place being huge. And it's just sort of normal size. Yeah. 
your perception is just so different. I, I think that if we are a computer simulation, I think we've always been. I don't think there was a point where something flipped on and we became a simulation. Something had to have created it, though. There yeah. had to have begin- be a beginning point. Yeah, there was. But these people think that it's something before happened. before we were born. Yeah, the people think that it's like something happened mid-90s where all of a sudden we flipped into being a simulation instead of reality. Hmm. And that I don't buy. I think if we were a simulation, I think we've always been. Right. And some of these people that really get into this say that... Like, how would that... How The logistics of that are just outrageous. Know. Some of these people that really get into this think that... They say that possibly you and I just... Our simulation just started right now. And everything that we remember was programmed for us to have happened in our past. How come we aren't a simulation that started last week? Why is it right now? We could have been. That's yeah. Some of these people think that you can, ju- you can just start any time and that you'll be programmed with memories. Memory. I, well, sure. I mean, I could see that. But, nah. nah. I don't know. I, I, I like the computer simulation theory. Hmm. Don't know if I necessarily buy it, but I like it. You I like think it's fascinating. It. I think it answers a lot of things. Hmm. Sure. Yeah. I think so. That's all I got. I just don't like it. (laughs) I know you don't like it. So listeners, strangers, as I don't know if you know us, we're now calling you strangers. Kurt coined that. that Yes, our fans are strangers. I enjoy it. Yes, our fellow strangers. What are your ideas? What are your theories? What do you think as as my fellow palaverer host Joe would say, what do you think is really happening in this meat locker that we call (laughs) you know, are we just is our body just sort of a vessel? Oh. Is it a simulation? Is it w- what's happening? You you tell us. I'd love to hear what your theories are. Well, that's my phone. <laughs> oh, maybe we're getting a theory right now. <laughs> it, That'd it be is a not. little crazy. It would be since this isn't uh, hasn't been released yet. <laughs> it was the programmers that programmed the simulation telling me it's, to shut the hell up. It's the person hiding in the closet right now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I said, I kind of buy this. Mm. I know a lot of people don't, but I think it answers a lot of things. But it's just kind of a mind-boggling um, topic to even wrap your head yeah, around. Going to Occam's Reality razor. just in general. <laughs> going to Occam's razor with the... The simplest answer. The simplest answer. Yeah. We're just in reality. There's no yeah. weird, funny business going on. We're just stuck here in, in <laughs> Oh, boring, there's some funny business There's some funny going business, on. but we're just stuck in boring old reality. <laughs> yeah. Which I don't like. I want something cool. Mm. I don't and know. And one, one of the articles that kind of freaked me out was it said that people that are... Like there's there's scientists that are seriously convinced that we are in a simulation, mm. and some of these scientists are figuring out ways to. I want proof. Some of these scientists are figuring out ways to bust out of the simulation mm. or to end What's it. What's outside of the simula- simulation? Is there a universe? Is there? Is there an I Earth? don't know. Is, is there anything there, outside the simulation? Is it just blackness? Well, I don't want to go outside. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. You know. Do we want them to do that? I don't know. Is that something we want? No, I'm happy in my little simulated universe. Yeah, whatever. It could have simulated me with more money and a better <laughs> job and all that stuff. But yeah, sure. Whatever. Like, come on, guys. Could be worse. Do I need to call IT or something? So, <laughs> so yes. What is your? What are your theories about reality? Do you buy any of these? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. We may never. I love know. thinking about them. I love talking about them. But at the end of the day, I feel I like if know. I think too much about it, though, I'm going to go a little crazy, and I don't want that. I feel like you could start to, you know, dissociate from real from reality if what? you start thinking about this stuff too Once much. Once you think about the fact that if we are a simulation, someday we're going to create a simulation that someday is going to create a simulation, mm-hmm. and we may not be the only simulation that whoever is running this is running. They could be running thousands of them. So it's kind of like you think about it. It's <coughs> kind of like, you know, my fifteen times great grandmother gave birth. She gave birth. She gave birth. She, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's They're exactly what it is. Sort that of like the simulation. We're giving birth to the other simulations. Mm. So I don't know. Hmm. At the end of the day, I don't know. Me either. I just go to bed and try not to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, right. Hope I have a, a good dream. So let us know what you think. Uh, we realized this was kind of a philosophical, yeah. heady. It was out there, man. It was hard to wade through, but it's fascinating stuff. And it's actually really a popular thing right now to. to Think about the simulated universe hypothesis. Yeah. Very cool. So It's definitely cool. It is. I don't think it's... Like I a, learned some stuff it's today. It's not like a matrix where there's bad things keeping us... I mean, it's possible. Yeah, it could be. Everybody's wearing black leather 
suits and long coats. I'm going to put on my Neo sunglasses and <laughs> fly around. Yeah, sure. And uh, going back to this, that's what they were saying is that there's people that tap into the ability to do this stuff where they're talking about people like Da Vinci and all that that are able to become more of a changing force than most people are, hmm. that they're able to they're tap slightly into more the, evolved. They're slightly more evolved and able to tap into the simulation in order to do stuff. Hmm. Geniuses. Geniuses. Which I am not able no, to tap into it. Me neither. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I can barely wrap my head around this stuff, so I'm clearly not tapping into anything. So, <laughs> in two weeks, we will have another episode. We're not sure what it's going to be yet. Yeah, not sure. If there's something you guys want to hear, let us know. Yeah, we'd love to tackle something you want us to talk about. Next time will be more of a paranormally kind yeah, I think uh, so. thing. We tossed around the idea of Mothman because there's been some Mothman stories Mothman in the news. Stuff, uh, Black Eyed Kids is always good. We oh, yeah. wanted to talk about Missing 411. I feel like we need to find some new Black Eyed Kids stories, though, because it's always the same old, same old. Yeah. So we'll if you got, if digging. there's a Black Eyed Kid listening to this, contact Krista. Uh, no. Lurk outside her house at night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, if anybody knocks on my door, I'm not letting you. It's just not <laughs> happening. Um, yeah, let us know. You can contact us on our Facebook page. We have... Uh, we have a Twitter that I don't do anything on that I really need to get going on. <laughs> we have an email, right? Gmail. Yep. We have uh, the strange sessions at gmail.com. Our Twitter is strange session because somebody had strange sessions. We're still working on that. Still working on that. She's going to get visited for some black eyed kids. Yeah. Making her change. We're sending it. them her way. <laughs> Um, and we're on YouTube, obviously, we are on YouTube. because that's, that's where you can listen to our listen stuff. To Eventually, we're, we're going to get our RSS feed up so that you can listen to us on your favorite podcasting app. We'd like to be on iTunes. Um, old School Media will be putting that together. We're working on some stuff in the background right now. We're making some transitioning um, with our website, something with our server. So there's just been a, a little bit of a delay, a technological delay in getting some of this stuff going, but... Stay tuned. Stay tuned. If you have any feedback, suggestions of what we could do better, suggestions of topics, yeah. let us know. Let us know. Get in touch. Have a story you want to share, let us know. Yes, definitely. Love to we, have a guest. We love stories. We plan on having guests. Yeah. We will try to get that uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson in here to oh, discuss that'd be great. this. All we have to do is say flat earth theory is real, and he'll be in here in a second. Oh, flat earth. I know. I just, that's crazy. I don't, I know. Don't even start with that. I don't yeah. understand No, that. me either. Considering no that I, considering the fact that I kind of buy that we are a computer simulation, <laughs> the fact that I cannot stand the flat Earth theory, yeah, says it is pretty wackadoo. <laughs> wackadoo. <laughs> On that note. On that note. Until next time. Stay, stay strange. strange.